Shalom, everybody. <laughs> Good to be with you and uh, get to spend some time sharing Jesus together and look forward to hearing your comments afterwards. Um, the title of this, this uh, particular time together is, is called Finding God Where We Least Expect. Finding God Where We Least Expect. <clears throat> uh, I want to start in the book of Psalms and we'll go to a couple of places there. Uh, Psalm 119 in verse 2, and um, it says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. And, and uh, this is primarily going to be about trying to find him, finding God where we least expect. And so, uh, and that usually includes seeking him and and. I know most of you, and I know your hearts, and I know that you are seeking the Lord and have done that many times throughout your life, and some of you, you've never stopped seeking the Lord. Um, but the next verse kind of shows some things that happen. Uh, Psalm 10 and verse 1, and it says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? So, I know that we've all experienced those times where we've sought the Lord and it seemed like um, uh, we couldn't find Him or we didn't find Him, we wanted to find Him more or we wanted our seeking to be more intimate and we had a, a, a pure heart in a certain sense and a true heart that we wanted the Lord and yet we weren't, we weren't really... Uh, getting everything out of it that we thought. We weren't seeing him to the fullness of what we thought we would. And, and so um, here you have David at another juncture, the same David who was talking about seeking the Lord with his whole heart, that it seems like the Lord was far off and, um, and, and wasn't answering and wasn't responding or wasn't revealing himself. <clears throat> and so... Um, um, and, and so I want to address that in terms of finding God where we least expect because um, so much of the time we have expectations about how we're going to find Him or what we're going to find when we seek the Lord. So I want to go to Luke chapter 15 and just read a little portion of, of that that relates to the woman with the lost coin. Luke 15 and it'll be verse, simply verse 8 and 9. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Um, and um, <clears throat> this, this process of seeking, sometimes it can take a long time, and in the case of the woman with the lost coin, um, what, if, what if the coin's on one side of the house or one side of the room and she's sweeping and she's looking on the other side and she's looking in the wrong direction, she's looking in the wrong place, she's, she's, she's trying to find what is valuable to her, but she's literally looking in the wrong place. Um, and so uh, I think that's, that's sometimes our problem because we're looking in a direction that, that uh, he's not at, mainly because we don't take into consideration his nature when we're seeking him. We're not really, we're just seeking God, generic God. And we're not, we're not taking in his nature. Um, and because of that, we don't really know the right place to look. And, and again, our hearts are sincere and we are genuinely after the Lord. And we wonder why the results aren't as fruitful as we wanted and the intimacy isn't so strong there. And so um, in uh, First Kings, we have an example of this sort of a situation. It's in First Kings 19 and this is... Um, Elijah's experience while seeking God. If you remember, Elijah was, uh, he had had a great victory prior to this, and yet 
uh, then the enemy seemed to come against him and he just ran and ran and ran until he got to a certain place and he was seeking the Lord. He went into a cave <clears throat> and his heart was after God and the Lord didn't just speak to him, the Lord gave him a pattern, a pattern to understand God by. Not just an event, but God gave him a pattern so that he could not just have something happen that day, but where he, he could begin to seek the Lord on a basis where he could find the Lord and find him more intimately. <clears throat> it's, this is in uh, 1 Kings 19, verse. I'm just reading verse 11 and 12. And the Lord said, Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, or tore the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Um, so you've got, you've got a reality that's working here. And the reality is, and, it, and it's pointed out right here in the scriptures. It says, and behold, the Lord passed by. The Lord was there. Um, and it says that it break the rocks in pieces before the Lord. The Lord was there, but the Lord wasn't in it. That's a big difference. We're willing to have the Lord or meet with the Lord, but it's not as fruitful as if the Lord is in it. When, when we, there's terminology we use as Christians. We say, oh, wasn't that a wonderful service? The Lord was really in it. But when the Lord talks about being in something, he's, he means he's really in it. I mean, if he's in us, he's really in us. And if the Lord is uh, in it, then he's the source and the substance of whatever that is, not just the maker of it. And in this scripture right here, he was both, he was the maker of that. He passed by, and that's the way it is. That's kind of the way people uh, in church a lot of times experience the Lord. He seems to pass by during a service, and they have a great time. But when they really set down their hearts to try to seek the Lord, he, they don't find that depth and that intimacy that they long after. So, um, so the same thing with the earthquake and the same answer. The Lord was not in it. <clears throat> and then uh, there was fi the final manifestation of uh, him being nearby, passing by nearby, was fire. But the Lord was not in it. But then there was a still small voice, and that was his voice, and it doesn't say the Lord wasn't in that. And we're looking for the fire. We're looking for the earthquake. We're looking for the wind, to, the mighty wind to break the rocks. And the Lord may not be in it. He, he may have actually passed by and caused that, but we're... St we're our greatest joy then is the experience of what happened, the rocks breaking and the wind blowing and the fire and all this stuff. But he's just passing by and then when it's over, we're empty. We're stuck with just an event. But the still the quietness, the, the smallness, the, the, uh, we miss that because that's not, that's not flashy enough for us. Um, so. You see that in the church world a lot. Some people, they're looking for the biggest, they want the biggest, most popular church. And they, they, you know, and they go there, and one reason why they go to a church like that is it, res it, it raises their own respect level before other Christians. I go to so-and-so church. It's the biggest, or it's the most popular right now. And... Uh, Say it's just the bit, it's the wind breaking rocks, or it's the fire, or something else. And uh, then some people want to get God, uh, and they're seeking God. And remember, that's what we're talking about seeking God, but 
trying to find him in places we wouldn't expect. They're seeking God, and they're, uh, they're looking for the most powerful minister around. You know, this man, he's a real man of God, and you'll, you'll see mountains move and all of these kind of things. And yet, is the Lord in it, or are we just going to experience the event and miss the pattern? And that the pattern was given. This isn't it. This isn't it. This isn't it. But the still, small, quiet voice that can speak into our being and inside and change things. And then there are those who read books and they listen to different audios from people and from personalities and looking for people with great reputations. Um, and, you know, I'm not discouraging any of these things, but according to the pattern that I'm talking about here, they are... Um, they're looking for something within that. That's why they're going to these big or popular or, or powerful or, you know, uh, experiences or people or places. And, and yeah, the Lord, the Lord is there. He'll pass by. But are we, are we dry? Are we lacking that desire after Jesus that will satisfy us from the inside out, which is, of course, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ being revealed, uh, which is not a mountain-moving thing in the sense of, of uh, you know, a, a big events that might happen at a church or something like that. So, just quoting Philippians 2, which I often do, Philippians 2, 5 through 8, which speaks of of Jesus and, and his approach. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in, the, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So here we have the, the uh, to accomplish the biggest work, Jesus didn't make himself bigger. To, to accomplish the greatest work ever, he didn't become great. He became less. He became, as it were, a still small voice. He became, instead of a, 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 all the rocks and the mountains breaking and everything. Um, so, I say be open to finding Jesus in places that you would never expect. All right, so let's just go over a few real quick. In Bethlehem, yeah, the scripture says he's going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Yeah, but it didn't say he's going to be born in a barn. Great city, city of David. But he was born in a barn there. And how many people walked by? that barn. And so, also he lived in Nazareth. What did the scriptures call it? The Nazareth of the Gentiles. Uh, what did one, one, one disciple say? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Surely he wouldn't be there. He would be in Jerusalem. So, how many people do you think would look there? Not very many. And they're, they they missed it. They missed him because they're looking in Jerusalem. They're looking in the great city. And Jesus wept over that great city. Okay, so a carpenter's son. Jesus was a carpenter's son growing up. How many met him? Met Jesus, the, the carpenter's son, labeled him and missed him. Literally labeled him carpenter's son so this is this isn't valid still small voice not valid and then um, to find God would you use a a small time preacher like Jesus were walking around with outcasts and whatever most people would go to the priest why because it's more established oh, it's not eternal I don't care how long the denomination has been going, it's not eternal. And so, you know, that recognizing that still small voice, I mean, could you, could I, could, 
would we be able to recognize the voice of God coming out of a, a donkey? Would we be able to know God's voice, or would we discount that? And then finally, my, or my final thing on my examples is a criminal on a cross. A criminal on a cross. This could not be the one God approves. There's no way, and yet he was. See, this could not be the one God approves, and yet that same slaughtered, rejected lamb hanging on the cross is sitting on the throne of God. All right. So, uh, a verse from Matthew 13, actually two verses. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to, to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. All right, so here it is. The mustard seed It's the least of all seeds. Uh, it's, uh, and Jesus said, He that is least among you shall be greatest. Why did this mustard seed become great? Because it benefited others. And then the fowls of the air came and rested in the boughs of that tree. And then finally, uh, actually I guess I got one more after this. Yeah, Matthew chapter 11. And I'm going to read uh, verse 7 through 11, but I'm going to just start with reading 7 and 8, and then we'll go to the others. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, talking about John the Baptist, What went you out to see in the wilderness? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went you out to see? And he repeats this, I think, four times. But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. He's saying, what did you come out to see? What were you expecting? And, and that's it. The problem is, when we're seeking the Lord, what are we expecting to see? That's the, that's the question. And usually our expectations are wrong. We're looking for John to be something greater looking than what he is. Or, and, uh, uh, and again, to what I said earlier, we don't see because we don't know his nature and we don't, uh, well, and we don't know his nature. And that causes us to look in the wrong places. We go to king's palaces looking for the, for the forerunner of Jesus Christ. The, the, the man that comes to declare and to make a way for the Son of God. And we would, we would go to king's palaces. But now I'm going to read the ne next couple of verses, verse 9 through 11. But what went you out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, this John, this is he of whom it is written, Behold I, God, send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John the Baptist was Jesus' was forerunner. He, he, what a great title. What a great position. What a great man. Everybody still to this day knows John the Baptist's name. But to Jesus, the least of these in the, king, the, least of the, in the kingdom are his great ones. Not John the Baptist, not even John. That's too grand, this forerunner, this great man. Even though he was out in the wilderness, even though he was in camel skin and everything, he doesn't compare to the least in the kingdom because those are the ones that are like Jesus. Those are the ones that bear his nature. Those are the ones that are like him. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you that 
you give us patterns, you give us, you show us your your way. And your way leads to the depth of who you are, because you manifest who you are in your ways. Father, let us see Christ in his in his being, in his selflessness, in his lowliness, so that we might be able to, when we seek him, to discover him in places we never would have expected, in all of the places we would normally look for him. We might miss him or only find him passing by. But with your guidance of the Holy Spirit and the opening of his nature to us, we begin to look in places no one would look to find him, and yet there he is. There he is, small. There he is, and yet greater than all in the kingdom. Always, 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 according to your heart and according to your nature. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name.